everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time news video. Now today we don't have tons and tons of news, but what we do have is big. We're gonna break down the logo and short teaser for the show, as well as some articles that have been circulating about the TV show and dispel some myths surrounding the Amazon adaptation. Then we're gonna have a major announcement that may prove pretty exciting for fans and what it might mean for the show. But first, I want to thank a very special sponsor, Queerencia. We'll talk more about them though in a little bit. Let's hit a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of green. With no real spoilers of any kind, feel free to watch this video regardless of whether you've read the series or not. The only warning at all here is that we're going to be talking extremely generally about some themes from the Wheel of Time, so I don't think they're going to be that spoilery, but if you don't want anything, I guess don't watch. Let's start with some fairly minor news, and this comes courtesy of Wattseries.com. Now, this should really be your trusted source for Wheel of Time news, and we'll talk a little bit more about why I say that here in a minute. But they are reporting that they have another director for season two of the show. Sana Hamri is reportedly directing an undisclosed number of episodes for the Wheel of Time TV show for season two. Now, who is Sana? Well, she's a director and a producer producer from Tangier with a history of directing music videos and television shows. Now she's best known for her work on the show Empire, where she both directs and is an executive producer. Now, I personally haven't seen any of her prior work, so I can't really comment on her skill as a director. So I am curious for anyone that has seen Empire, if you want to chime in in the comments and let me know how that show is and if she's done a good job. I've heard a lot of good things about it though, so I'm assuming that's good. Now I'll have the Watt series article linked in the description of the video if you want to read more in detail about how they found out this information, but you know our good friend Geeky Eerie is out there sleuthing nonstop to find you guys info. Which brings me to the absolute ridiculousness that has been circulating on the internet lately. Because of the increasing marketing from Amazon and things like the clip that we're about to break down in a minute, a number of larger media outlets have begun writing articles about the Wheel of Time and the upcoming show. Now, normally I would think this is awesome, and to a small degree I kind of still think it is. It's great that people are talking about it. But if you take a moment to read some of these articles, there is some absolute garbage out there being written. While there are a number of these terrible articles out there, I'm going to pick on one that came out just about a week ago from Collider. It's a pop culture website that reports on pretty much everything. The Collider article is riddled with factual errors about the series, and it's quite obvious that the person writing the article has not read The Wheel of Time. I think at best they probably looked at the wiki and went ahead and wrote the article, but then probably butchered the wiki too. For example, it talks of a 14 book series, Randall Thor from the small town of Two Rivers, Moraine the Sorceress, that's not even to mention the fact that the article says the first season is only six episodes long. To be very clear for everybody watching this, that may have read that article at least, the show will be eight episodes long in the first season. We just have titles for six of them. There will be eight. The reason I bring this up is not just to bash bad media. Well, okay, partially to bash bad media. <laughs> but more importantly, let's direct people to places that we know do a good job with reporting the news and promote those places. That's why I mentioned earlier, support wattseries.com as they are on top of the news. Send people to sites like that, like Dragon Mount, Weaves of the Wheel, and thegreatbite.com. These are all run by fans and they will get you more detailed information. And of course, that's the type of information we want non-fans to be reading too. So be sure to share that stuff and not that garbage from places like Collider. Speaking of weavesofthewheel.com, they are reporting on a potential new cast member. They are reporting that Gary Beadle will be playing an unknown role in the show. Gary has updated his Twitter bio to include the Wheel of Time, listing it among the other shows that he has roles on. Now, who is Gary Beadle? Well, he's a 55-year-old British actor best known for his time on EastEnders and Operation Good Guys. I personally don't know much of his work, and we don't know much about his role. But if you are somebody that is familiar with his work, make sure to let me know in the comments of the video what you think of this casting. Now, all right, before getting to like the major, major news, let me tell you a bit about the video's sponsor, Queerencia. This sponsor is actually very dear to me as it's owned by a very good friend of mine and somebody that I respect a ton. Queerencia is a black and LGBTQ plus owned apparel company that merges queer history and culture with trendy products to better educate, influence, and encourage 
all types of queer people and allies of that community. Queerantia sends a portion of its profits to support the Trevor Project and the Marsha Johnson Institute. This is really an amazing business and worthy of your cash. Their selection of stuff is outstanding, it's super high quality, and they are giving all of my viewers 10% off everything for the next two weeks. Just use the coupon code NABLESS10 at checkout and you're gonna get your discount. Please take your time to support a small business and support a great cause. It's a great place and they got some really cool stuff. Head to Querencia.co or click the link in the description of this video uh, to check out their selection. Don't forget to use the code NABLESS10 to get your 10% off. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, now let's go ahead and get to one of the main events. If you have not seen the clip yet, Amazon released the first major marketing teaser, in my opinion at least, as they released an updated Wheel of Time logo and what looks like a small intro for the show, as well as announcing that the show will officially release in 2021. I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip for you guys a few times and then we'll break it down. Now, all right, as always, I am not gonna break this down frame by frame, but I will hit the main details and things that I think are interesting. If you want a more detailed breakdown of the trailer, as always, make sure to check out the videos on the topic from my good friend Lauren over at Unraveling the Pattern. I will have his video linked in the description of the video. The Dusty Wheel also did a long hour worth discussion of it, so you can check that out too. But let's go ahead and dive in a bit. Let's start with the most obvious piece, and that is the release date or release year in this case. Although we've sort of assumed this was the case, we have confirmation of a 2021 release from Amazon. Now this is significant because they are now very, very confident that they can release the show this year. Would it have been nice to get an exact release date? Yeah, but I'll take this for now, especially considering some news that we're gonna talk about here in a moment. However, let me frame it in a different way for those of you, so maybe this will hit home. Considering it's July now, that means that we have Wheel of Time on our televisions for sure within the next six months. Guys, like for sure in the next six months, you're gonna be watching Wheel of Time on your TV. It's happening, that's awesome. The other thing to think about for this, for those of you that were not overly excited about, oh, well, I kinda already knew 2021. The thing to think about here is this, that teaser is gonna go out to everybody. It's letting everybody, not just the Wheel of Time fans that have been following this like us, but everybody, that this show is gonna be here this year. So this is kind of the beginning of that outside the fandom marketing. Anyways, let's talk about the music. This was the first time that I think that we are hearing original music for the show. I've seen nothing that says that it wasn't original and I can't find this audio clip anywhere else. So I don't think it's stock audio as far as I can tell. This very well might be a part of the music for the show, which is very exciting to me. The drums and the chorus are super cool and I love the vibe that it's giving off. I'm wondering if this is part of the actual theme for the show or if this is just some music they created for this clip. I'm hoping it's music for the show. I am inclined to believe that this tease is a part of the actual intro to the show. I doubt it's the entire thing, but I would imagine it's part of the opening and I am totally in favor of that. Let's also talk about the image itself. This is a serpent eating its own tail, also sometimes referred to as an Ouroboros, which is one of the main thematic elements in the books. What I like about this is that we are seeing multiple revolutions of that serpent, indicating the cyclical nature of time. Now, the geek in me wishes that we had seven turns there uh, just to symbolize the seven ages, but this is still really, really cool. The W and the M are also opposites of each other, reflecting the yin and yang themes of the books as well. And very quickly, you can see what appears to be the Aes Sedai symbol on the first scale that we see on the serpent at the beginning of the video. One other thing worth noting here, I think if you think back to the teaser we got about Matt's dagger, there was a very brief image of the same pattern that we see here on the serpent. Now here's what that tells me, that these teasers that we've been getting are parts and pieces from a larger teaser trailer that has already been put together. 
That's my guess. We could be seeing clips of some of the main full length trailer that will be coming out for the show, which is kind of exciting because we know that it's there. One other thing that changed as this clip was released was the logo on the official Wheel of Time Twitter account. It appears that the show has a new logo, which is a very cool compilation of the W and T. It looks super slick. I am very curious of what you guys think of the logo. Make sure to let me know in the comments. Now, one other thing that I absolutely love is that if you zoom in on the logo, you will see some writing in the old tongue, which when translated says, here is always a welcome for the dragon sworn or people of the dragon. Now this is a really cool nod to the Wheel of Time fans on Twitter as they've kind of taken the name dragon sworn. And it's very cool of Amazon to put this in there for fans. I love these little uh, Easter egg type things. This is a show and a showrunner that understand this community. Not even a week after the release of this clip, however, we have another major announcement from the Wheel of Time. And this one, albeit on the surface doesn't seem that big, I think will be the biggest of all of them. The Wheel of Time Twitter account announced that Rafe Judkins would be a part of a panel at Comic-Con Online talking about the Wheel of Time television show. Now, this is very significant for a number of reasons. If you are not aware, Comic-Con is probably the largest fantasy and comic convention in the world, especially the one in San Diego, which is th what this one is. It's frequently a place where shows are announced, trailers are dropped, and hype is built. Game of Thrones made announcements at Comic-Con for years. Comic-Con is doing an online event this year, but Rafe has a spot in the hour-long Amazon panel. Now, if you look at that billing, it describes who will be a part of the Amazon section. And Rafe is listed first, and then it says there will be illuminating discussion and exclusive asset drops and announcements. So what does this mean? Well, I think we're going to see two things from this panel on July 23rd. First, I think that we'll see a real first trailer. And second, I think we're going to get a release date. Let's first talk about the trailer. I do not think that this will be a full-length cinematic trailer. That will be over two minutes long. That's not what I think we get here. What I do think that we will get is an action and spectacle-filled trailer designed to pique the interest of non-Wheel of Time fans. It will likely highlight the main actors and actresses from the series, specifically the internationally famous ones like Rosamund Pike, Alvaro Morte, Sofia Akinado, and Daniel Henney. We will probably see some CGI, some action, things like that, maybe even a shot of the White Tower. Something that looks really damn cool. Next, I also think the reason I say this is that the, the reason to drop a trailer at Comic-Con would be to drag in fans of other fantasy series that may not know about the Wheel of Time. You have to show something that makes me want to watch it. So they're going to design this trailer not to show off plot details, but more to wow people so that they want to check it out more. That's typically what you'll see at something like this. Now next... I also think this is where we're going to get an exact release date for the show. We already know 2021, but I think we're going to get the real release date here. That's what they've been saving. They know when they're going to release this. They've kind of known for a while, I imagine. This is the time where they want to let it out. That's my guess. So what do you guys think of Rafe's appearance at Comic-Con and the short teaser logo and the new logo on Twitter? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time videos. We'll have a few more entries in the read-through series coming soon, as well as the story of Arthur Hawkwing. I will also be at JordanCon next weekend, and so you will see some content from that. And we'll probably be doing a live stream here soon for the 25,000 subscriber mark that we just hit, which is awesome. Thank you all for that. Don't forget to check out Queerencia, and thanks again to them for sponsoring the video. Huge thank you to the biggest sponsors on my channel, my patrons over on Patreon. You guys keep the lights on, and I am incredibly grateful for the continued support. Looking forward to meeting a bunch of you guys here at Jordan Con in the next week. Anyways, thank you all for watching this video, and until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?